Alright, so I don't know where this is going. I don't know if this is getting tacked right on SMC. I don't know how long it is. Um, I ramble. Have you noticed? Uh, I'm a scattered individual. So here we go. Every Friday or Saturday, I post stuff on my Facebook. Adam Niffin at Facebook. Go find me. Love letters, death threats, you know, whatever. Send them all. Um, but I post up prodding the folks that are on the old Facebooks. And there's quite a few folks that are subscribed to the channel up on the Facebooks. Hit me up on the Facebooks. Um, there's I've basically got three groups of people. Those that are physically here now. Friends, family, you know, in my <clears throat> ge geographic location that I grew up with or I know locally. <laughs> uh, heathens that I know abroad, all over the world. And you folks at YouTube. You folks out there in my YouTube world. Um, anyhow, I post up asking for topics of interest someone want covered. Jeff LeClaire actually posted just a minute ago. If he posted it while I was shooting this uh, last segment. Um, ideas leading to open your own shop versus working for an established shop. If you go back to my videos, I explain a lot of my situation in, in fairly broad detail, okay? I started out when I moved to the property I'm in at far less than zero. Uh, going through divorce, failing out of college, just coming out off of picking up a, my my first, last, and only DUI. I can assure you that that shit ain't happening again. Um, basically finding myself stranded and in no way to provide a means for myself or my family. I live in you know in the county here, just north of Des Moines. Uh, my property has a 30 by 30 building. That's the shop you guys used to see in all the videos. A little more than a backyard clandestine operation. We weren't going about it correctly. But, same thing, I had to provide somehow. And I couldn't find work. I couldn't find a steady regular job. Um, I was a carpenter for almost a decade on my own. I was a carpenter from high school till... 2008-2009 when uh, the the market fell out and had been on my own for damn near a decade at that point. This year marks the the 10 year marker since I've actually had a real jobby job of any longevity or import. Having that kind of background you don't find jobs easily. Having a license you don't find a job at all. So I started doing it. Um, first job I sold was a, a side swipe on a Toyota, not a Honda Civic, sorry. And I knew principles, basics, and knew my way around. I could, I could do it. it. Came out great. You can see the pictures on the Facebook shop page. <laughs> I took the deposit money and went and bought basics for the shop. I bought my first line file. I had a DA already. Uh, I went through and, and bought some things I needed. I was working with really cheap guns at that time. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. I wasn't in a point where I could just go out and get a job at a established shop. I wasn't, I don't have the learned capacities. Um, my formal training college-wise or whatnot comes in lieu of the time I spent in DMACC. Um, Basically, I'm a semester from testing out for my industrial welding certifications, and I'm about a semester, yeah, about a semester, semester and a half away from an associate's of science uh, business administration degree. Um, those are my formal skills. Then, in the field, I learned quite a bit about carpentry. I can take a flat plot of land have it uh, go from a pasture land to handing some of their keys to their new home. I've done it before. 
Okay, so background story out of the way. Starting your own versus an established shop. My suggestion to anybody out there, an extra 10, 20 grand a year is really easy to pick up the side work, all right? You find somewhere you can do it. Uh, around here, you can find places as little as 500 a month for adequate enough space to do little side projects. 500 a month, that's... That's still a tidy sum. I mean, you're talking, what is that, six grand a year, plus your utilities and all that, so you're looking at seven grand a year. So, all that being said, um, if you can't do it on your property, there's expenses there. Pick up the side work, do the side work. Um, And if you've got a $30,000 job, you can make $50,000. A lot of it, um, if you go above board, all by the books, most of it's deductible, de uh, deducted, tax deducted uh, aspects. There's so much you can deduct when you've got a, a small venture. Um, don't go in unfunded. You know, versus working at a big shop, you go in, you got your box, you got your station, you got your work. Uh, your responsibility is to your immediate supervisor or supervisors and the project at hand. That's it. That'd be nice. Um, working on your, working for yourself doesn't mean you're your own boss. I've got up to eight or ten bosses at any given time that demand my single on only attention each so don't don't get that in your head uh, being your own boss doesn't mean you're just rolling in grub um, right now we got to roll keeping everything lean um, keeping our overhead as low as possible we still got to roll about three grand a month before Jeremy or I <laughs> really get paid and that's beyond any materials or supplies parts that's beyond those things. Just keep the lights on, keep us insured, um, keep all those things taken care of. So there, that's the, the, the pros of working for someone, the, the, the cons of working for someone. Obviously, you don't get to pick and choose. Well, working for yourself, you don't always get to pick and choose. We're taking a lot of work that's just coming down the pipes. So whatever we can get our hands on to establish our name, to establish our shop. Um... Now, you go into a shop situation, get yourself funded, either self-funding, work, build up your tools and equipment, build up your portfolio. That's something I didn't do. My laptop I had prior got stolen, and there were a lot of pictures on it of things, not particularly restoration involved, so it was a moot point, but still, there was a lot of pictures of my handcrafted uh, items from wood to steel. Um, automotive projects we had done, you know, engine swaps and things like that. It's all gone. Build your portfolio. Save up your money. Shop the market. Find out what your insurance costs are going to be. Find out what your shop costs are going to be. You get as big a shop as you can for the money you can afford. Get the biggest compressor you can for the money you can afford. 80 gallon two stage. 20 some CFM at 150 pounds, that's going to do you pretty good. And quite honestly, industrial level, that's the minimum. Um, establish your credit. If you can run lines of credit, that's going to help you. Uh, at that point, establish an LLC, get it separated from you. Put all of your shop fixtures, tools, everything in in an LLC, go to the uh, Secretary of State, file it for 50 bucks, it's simple and easy. Uh, these are all steps that if I had the time and the, the funds to do so. And then at that point, after you've established all your costs, start your inventory. Put a couple fives of lacquer thinner that you clean all your shit with away. Put a few gallons of clear away. Um, 
make sure you've got the guns that you're going to need you know paint guns you're going to need for the first couple years make sure you've got all your air tools you're going to need uh wrenches toolboxes welders get all that stuff squared away even if it's sitting in boxes brand new in a storage shelter do it at that point you're set you've got most of what you need um have either leverage to a year's income or have a year's income minimum um, you know a minimum shop that's $72,000 a year we're running bare bones about 72 grand a year just turn the lights on and have it go If I had 72 grand just stacked away, we'd be in a lot different position, status, and situation. Parts deposits always get them. Always save them. Spend them on the parts. And only the parts and materials for that job. Even if you got to go out and buy all the shit you need for that job and put it on a shelf until you're ready for it. Even if it's a year from now. Do it. These are things that you need to have in consideration. Um, you know, bookkeepers and attorneys and things like that. Those are things that you're going to want. But uh, the basics of what I've just outlined sounds like a tall order, and it is. I didn't do it. We suffer for it weekly, daily, monthly, hourly. We suffer for it, okay? And that's all there is to it. But uh, if I had the advice stick with the company you're in make that extra cash when your extra cash is more than your income cash and you can reliably count on it I don't know the world's your oyster don't start a business unless it's something you feel you need to do for you that's pretty much my summing up of uh, opening your own shop versus working for an established shop. If I had my way about it starting out, I would have found some old timer to go work for. Just be a grunt and get on the list to buy him out when he retires. Leverage my way into that situation. But it's not a perfect world. Those are all the perfect answers. Small business development company, corporation, whatever the hell they're called, they point you in the right direction. But all that stuff I just ran over, you can throw it out the window. You can flush it down the toilet if you don't have a plan. Clear plan with written objectives, timelines, measurable accomplishments. If you can't do that, don't go out. It's not worth it to you. You'll fail. Your company checkbook is not your personal piggy bank. If you do, you will fail. Um, if you're not prepared to be broke for 24 to 96 months, you'll fail. You know, there's there's a chance that I will move. For my residence, I mean, the land is, its property served its purpose. It got to start it. I needed that shop more than anything else. Um, but there's a chance I will have to move because I can't support it and the shop. If you're not ready to go broke, don't do it. You will fail. If you're not ready to take harsh criticisms and people trying to hustle you and scam you for your last penny, don't do it. You'll fail. If you like nice things and new clothes and pretty cars and the latest electronics and you find that, that you can't live without them, don't do it. You'll fail. Um, we're on the same laptop I've had for three years. Most of my furniture is 
all my furniture is second hand. At least half of it was either handed down to me from elder family members or given to me from family when I moved here. Um, if you're keeping up with the Joneses, don't do it. You'll fail. Those are the harsh truths. Those are the harsh facts. If it sings to your soul and you're passionate about it, the you know if if the why is big enough, the how is going to take care of itself. I've been at it about three years now in this one endeavor. The road is long and the road is hard, but. The why is so big, the how doesn't matter. I will succeed in this through great turmoil and personal loss, but I'll succeed. And when I get that point, when I get to where things are functioning like they're supposed to and set up like they're supposed to, there's red tape galore. You got permits and classes and insurance and inspections and the list goes on and we limit a lot of our issues simply by the fact that we actually paint so little which is interesting because they have very few restrictions and regulations about welding and fabricating but a ton about paint um, I intend to go get my sheepskin to hang on the wall. Uh, it'll take, right now, it would take student loans. And I've got a situation there to take care of. But uh, it's a path worth taking. It's just not easy. Not first. It gets easier. Let go of the material need need and want, you'll do fine. Have a plan, you do alright. Bring in third party observers to give advice that don't know shit about the industry you're in. Just can read facts and figures and listen to the predicaments you get yourself into, because there will be predicaments. If you're not ready to get your sh ego shat on, um it gets rough. I mean, I've got days that really bring me down with, you know, work that I know is on par. I've done work below par. That's what they paid for. That's what they, they requested specifically. Because it's cheaper. Well, it's not. And I've refused that work since. Um, you're going to do a lot of work you don't want to do. Stay away from rust repair. There's nothing simple or concise about that. Jeff, I don't know if I answered what you were looking for. I hope I helped some folks out out there. Like I said, there's nothing special about me. I'm no better, no worse than any other mother's son. Um, but I can make it happen. I can make it happen at less than zero. You can do better. <laughs>